This boyfriend got mad at me and told me, you'll never handle the drug world. And I said, oh yeah, watch me. And I took a nosedive off into a drug world that I had no idea what was going to happen. When I was a junior, my mom was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and the rheumatoid arthritis had attacked her internal organs, which created a number of other problems, and she continued to be rushed to the ER. I was in a car accident at the end of my junior year and totaled my car, and because of that car accident, I was injured and taken off the softball team and unable to play for the rest of the season and possibly the next year. I made some new friends who weren't playing softball, and they taught me that taking pain medication would numb any pain or anxiety or any emotions that I had. So having them over to my house, they realized that my mom had pain medication, and I would go in and, and take a few of her pills here and there and just hope that she wouldn't notice. At like 16, I would use a fake ID to get into the bars and I wouldn't just drink to party um, or have a good time. I was drinking to get drunk and black out. I remember very clearly being in a bank parking lot and I'd just taken out some money probably to buy alcohol or drugs. And my dad called me and said that my mom had been rushed to the ER. I went and visited her for a little while and then left. Um, I went to get ready to go out and I was gonna stop by the hospital that night on my way to the bar with my friends. And so I went home and got all dressed and ready to go out, stopped by the hospital for just a few minutes. I held her hand and kissed her on the forehead and I told her, Mom, I love you and I'll be back tomorrow. That night I, I went out and I partied and I partied hard and went home and passed out. The next morning I woke up to my dad knocking on my bedroom door and when I opened it, he bear hugged me and told me that he had lost his best friend, that she had died, that her heart gave out. I remember having conversations with my dad and him thanking me for not being like some of those other kids that run off and do drugs and drink and run away and, and do crazy things when, when one of their parents dies. And little did he know that I had been using for months before this. I promised him that I would do good in school and so I graduated high school and graduated in the top of my class and did really well. For graduation, I wanted to have a party at my house and I had some people that purchased alcohol and brought it to my house in hopes that we would just all stay there and party and not get out and drive. I had a boyfriend who was gonna sweep me off my feet, he was amazing, and I just thought that everything was going great. And I went to look for him and found him in my bedroom closet, smoking meth with another guy. He handed me a pipe and taught me how to smoke meth. My drug use continued for a few months after that, and this boyfriend got mad at me for one reason or another and told me, you'll never handle the drug world. And I said, oh yeah, watch me, being a stubborn kid right out of high school. And I took a nosedive off into a drug world that I had no idea what was going to happen. I ended up bouncing from drug house to drug house, from drug dealer to drug dealer, sleeping anywhere that I possibly could and, and with whoever I wanted to. I gave my body to drugs and I gave my body to people. I ended up getting mixed up with the Mexican Mafia and ended up in a hotel room. The police ended up showing up and arresting me and that was the first time I went to jail. I called my dad with my phone call and he called a bail bondsman friend and they bonded me out. And I got out and I went right back to doing the exact same thing, bouncing from house to house, using, stealing what I could to get what I needed. I got mixed up in some organized crime rings, running drugs in between, running guns in between. People would steal cars and credit cards and debit cards and IDs. And so I started writing checks. That's how I got my drugs and that's how I got my money. I ran off to a neighboring town and met this man 
who was going to be like a father figure to me. He was going to help me pay off my probation fees. He was going to take care of me and, and pay for things for me. So he took me from this house and took me out to a house in the country and introduced me to a man who taught me how to manufacture meth. I would never mix my own drugs or, or stick a needle in my own arm. I always found somebody else to do it. There were several times that I woke up and either he was touching me, my pants would be around my ankles, or I didn't know how I had gone to sleep. After months and months of this, I decided I'd had enough and I wanted to get away. And so we would go into town and we would get ingredients and we would come back out and we would cook the meth and then we would go back in and we would sell the drugs and it was just a repetitive cycle. And so I told him, I'm gonna get this stuff but you can't go in with me because they don't know you. Well, he caught on very quickly and asked me if I was trying to leave and I told him no and he jumped over on top of me in the truck and proceeded to beat me up. And he hit me over and over and then grabbed a knife off the dash of the truck and tried to cut at me. I held him off with all my strength, tried to roll down the window to scream for help, but there was nobody around who would have heard me. He eventually gave up and jumped over in the driver's seat of the truck. And while I tried to recompose myself and catch my breath from him trying to strangle me. He drove off to this deserted area where there were some dead trees and rocks. And he pulls up and gets out of the truck and tells me to get out. And when I get out, he throws a shovel at me and he tells me to start digging. He wanted me to dig my own grave. He was gonna kill me. His dog barked at him grabbed his attention and so in sandals I take off running. I couldn't run very fast and he caught me. He walked back and picked the shovel up and there was nothing but darkness. There was nothing that told me that there was a God. If there was a God, why would he take my mom away? I had been through so many awful things. How could there possibly be a God? But you know, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And as he came back at me with that shovel, I cried out to whatever. And I said, somebody has got to help me. And it was like he ran into an invisible wall. His countenance changed, his demeanor changed, his eyes changed, everything about him changed. And he turned around, walked back to the truck, threw the shovel in and said, get in before I change my mind. And I did. I was terrified and I had no idea what had just happened. We went back to the house and I took some pain medication and went to sleep. And when I woke up, he was asleep. And so I plotted with another girl that was living there to get away. And so we rigged up an old car and we took off down the highway as fast as we could. For about two weeks, he, he messaged me all day, every day. I miss you, please come back. I love you so much. At the end of those two weeks, he sent me a message that said, please come back. I know where your dad lives. And I was so afraid for what he could possibly do to my dad that I went back. I was still using and using more and more all the time until I woke up one morning and he was on top of me trying to rape me. I got away and he didn't chase after me. And so I came out of the room and he was gone and the police were pulling up in a driveway and they were there to pick me up on a warrant that wasn't mine and they took me to jail that day. I went to jail for that one warrant and ended up with 26 charges. And I got in trouble for giving tattoos. They put me in solitary confinement for 30 days. And there was a woman on the other side of the wall that would put coffee and a piece of notebook paper. She would write the promises of God God loves you no matter what. God is faithful. God never changes. He doesn't care what you've done. He just cares about you and he loves you. So because of her words, I talked to the chaplain and I started a Bible study. And after I got done reading the book of hope, I got down on my knees and I threw my hands up in the air and I said, God, if you get me out of this, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Two days later, I got out of solitary confinement, called my dad, and he answered the phone. And he said, I found you a bed in Teen Challenge. 
So about a week later, I went to court for the first time, and they had lost my paperwork. The DA wanted to send me to prison for 25 years. The next day, I went back to court, and my paperwork was wrong. And my lawyer tried to convince me, just stay in jail for a couple of months. Why would you want to go to this program that's 12 months when you could just stay in jail for two and then get out? But something inside of me knew that, that I had to go to the program. So I went to court for the third time, and the DA had changed, and his brother had gone through Teen Challenge, and the bailiff's cousin had gone through Teen Challenge. So out of 20 people sitting in a jury box that day, I was the only one sentenced to leave, and I was sentenced to Teen Challenge. The judge looked me in the face and said, I better not see you again. And I said, no, sir, you won't. I stepped foot onto the Teen Challenge property and my life has never been the same. I never craved another drug. I didn't crave cigarettes anymore. I didn't crave alcohol. Three days after being in the program, I gave my heart to the Lord. After graduating the program, I met my husband and we worked on staff together for Teen Challenge. Our heart is to see God move in people's lives like He moved in our lives. And we are humbled and privileged and just honored that God would take two former criminals and drug addicts and transform our lives. It's not our stories as much as it is the love of Jesus Christ and the reality of who He is and how He saved us. and kept his promise that he would never leave us or forsake us.